Hi guys and welcome to this YouTube session. I'm Dr. Preeti Sharma and I'm your pathology educator on the platform of Anne Academy. Well, today, having discussed a lot of MCQs and images otherwise, I've got a little bit of a different kind of a session where uh, certainly important because we are going to talk about the similarities of food that you get to see in pathology. So, well, it was quite a task because it's impossible to cover the love for food that pathologists show and uh, it's probably seen in every disease they've got a similarity that they put up with food but certainly got you some of the important ones which could help you in your MC as well. So yes, we'll start. But before that, I just want all of you to know today being the last day and the clock ticking. So in case you wish to take the subscription, there's a 20% off and the code PATHOLIVE will help you get the same. So in case you plan to sign up for an academy, then yes. Okay, having said that, let's begin with the easiest one, the food that the pathologists, the breakfast that they start with, fried egg appearance. Fried egg appearance is not only important in path, but also in micro, as all of you know. So in pathology, or first, what is fried egg appearance? So the yellow, the yolk, refers to the nucleus, and the whitish area is the clear area around it. So when you look at all these cells, you can definitely see that the center, which is the egg yolk, is nothing but the nucleus. So there's a nucleus that is there, and then there's a perinuclear halo that all of you notice. So when it comes to the pathology part of it, please remember, in the brain, there's a very famous tumor, oligodendroglioma, which shows fried egg appearance. In blood disorders, it is hairy cell leukemia. And in hairy cell leukemia also, it's the bone marrow biopsy, not the aspirate. Aspirate of hairy cell leukemia shows you a dry tap, as all of you remember. Here, the bone marrow biopsy shows you a fried egg appearance. And the third one, when we're talking about the genital tumors, seminoma testis, dysgerminoma ovary, similar tumors, right? So, oligodendroglioma, hairy cell leukemia, seminoma, dysgerminoma show you the fried egg appearance. When I talk about microbiology, these are the two M colonies which tend to show me the fried egg appearance. The colonies of mycoplasma and the colonies of malassezia furfur, which is a fungal organism. So mycoplasma and malassezia, these two M's showed me, show me fried egg colonies. Having said that, let's uh, complete the breakfast along with eggs. Let's also have consider coffee and sugar. So when do we uh, get to see or what do we have similar to sugar? Remember in pathology, there's a tumor that is referred to as sugar tumor and uh, this belongs to a very a very famous family. Sugar tumors belong to the family of picomas. For those who are unaware of what picoma is, picoma is a kind of a cell that is perivascular epithelioid cell. Perivascular epithelioid cell and uh, these are tumors arising from those. So perivascular epithelioid cell tumors and there's something very peculiar about them that in terms of the immunohistochemistry, they tend to be HMB45 positive. Picomas and sugar tumors are HMB45 positive and how does it look like under the microscope? It shows us clear cells. So we'll see clear cells and that is sugar tumor of the lung. Again, to wrap up the breakfast with eggs and sugar, we must have coffee. So where all do we see coffee bean nuclei? You can learn it with the help of a mnemonic, but honestly, these are things which are so well known that you would not need a mnemonic. I think for papillary carcinoma thyroid, everyone knows what is a coffee bean nucleus, just as how a coffee bean looks like, a line in the center. So when you see these nuclei, they'll have a line running through them. Nucleus has a line running through it. That's a coffee bean nucleus. So in the thyroid, I think everyone knows papillary carcinoma thyroid is very famous for its nuclear features. Then there's a disorder called Langerhans cell histiocytosis. That also shows you coffee bean nuclei. And there are two tumors of the ovary. Ovary also shows you coffee bean nuclei. One is coffee. Coffee is always granular powder, right? Granulosa cell tumor. And we always brew the coffee before drinking it. So Brenner's tumor. Brewing the coffee, brewing the granular coffee. So in the ovary, brewing the granular coffee. Brew, Brenner tumor, granular, granulosa cell tumor. Thyroid papillary carcinoma. And lastly, Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Okay, so having said that, let's also discuss a couple of fruits which can help me when it comes to pathology and micro and how they are, you know, how are they used in the world of medicine. 
So first, this is the golden apple, the green apple that we know of. So green apple reminds me of apple green by refringence, one of the most famous questions that we have in pathology. So when I'm talking about apple green by refringence, I know I'm talking about amyloid. And that is the description that we give for amyloid when I use which stain? When I use the Congo red stain. And to visualize this by refringence, see by means two and refringence means refractive indices. So amyloid, when I put Congo red, amyloid tends to show me different refractive indices. And how will I be able to appreciate that? When I use a special microscope, that is the polarizing microscope. All of you can appreciate this apple green birefringence of amyloid that has come. So remember the apple green, green apple, polarizing microscope, Congo red is the stain, amyloid is the material. After this, let's go on to the orange appearance. So the, I think this is more of a, a surgery question and a very famous surgery sign that you see in patients of breast cancer and especially that breast cancer which has involved the lymphatics of the dermis. Dermal lymphatic involvement leads to this kind of a dimpling in the skin and that is referred to as the pure de orange appearance. And uh, I think it's quite famous especially for which kind of cancers, which kind of breast cancers with inflammatory cancers it is quite uh, well uh, known so inflammatory cancers why so because inflammatory cancer tends to involve the lymphatics of the dermis and hence this appearance is seen oranges are done i think now we can move on to the world of strawberries and these are all the different strawberry appearances that we can see so I can see a strawberry tongue over here, then there are strawberry gums out here, there's a strawberry lesion on the skin, there is a strawberry skull that I see, there's a gallbladder which has got a strawberry appearance, there's the cervix which has got the strawberry appearance. So one by one if we go, I've got a list, we'll keep correlating. Whenever we see strawberry tongue and that is seen in two conditions, one is a vasculitis in children that is known as Kawasaki disease. So somewhere I get a three, four, five year old child, a less than five year old child and presenting with a vasculitis, Kawasaki disease, strawberry tongue. And then there's an infection also which can come with this and that is scarlet fever. So that's the strawberry tongue that I'm talking about. When I talk about strawberry gums, strawberry gums are seen in vaginal granulomatosis. Vaginal granulomatosis tends to show you strawberry gums as you can again see in this particular picture. Coming to the next, strawberry hemangioma. I think everyone knows hemangioma is the most famous. The word tells you oma is benign and angio is blood vessel. So it's a benign tumor of the blood vessel. It's nothing but a capillary hemangioma. It's nothing but a capillary hemangioma. But why did I call it a strawberry one? Because you usually tend to see it in children less than seven years of age. And the appearance is just like a strawberry. So it's like stuck on the skin like a strawberry and it occurs in children less than seven. In fact, you know, by seven, it tends to fade away also. This strawberry hemangioma clinically, when you read it in pediatrics, you'll actually analyze that this is that kind of a particular lesion, which, which kind of shrinks. So it uh, vanishes also or diminishes by the age of seven. So it's nothing but a capillary hemangioma. Talking about a strawberry gallbladder, so if I go back and I see, I can definitely, this is the gallbladder because it's green in color, it's bile stained. So this is the gallbladder and I can see a couple of uh, yellowish stones. Yellowish stones remind me of cholesterol stones. So certainly there's a cholesterol deposition that is happening. And if you look at the rest of the mucosa, which is the greenish color one, can you see these yellow, yellow dots and speckles over it on the greenish mucosa? So the greenish color is because of bile. And these yellow, yellow speckles are because of cholesterol. So what disease am I talking about? We are talking about cholesterolosis of the gallbladder. Cholesterolosis, gallbladder, strawberry appearance. Coming to the next, strawberry cervix. Strawberry cervix, very famous trichomonas. Having a look at this, everyone can appreciate this picture out here. We also call it the angry looking cervix because on the uh, cervical examination, I'm seeing there are these punctate spots. So definitely an angry looking cervix, strawberry cervix, and that is associated with trichomonas vaginalis. 
Coming to the next, there's also something known as strawberry skin, which can be seen in sarcoidosis. Not a very famous image, so I won't go into that. But lastly, we have strawberry skull, and that is seen in a syndrome called Edward syndrome. For uh, the new students and also for the others, for revision, Edward syndrome, E for Edward, E for 18. So Edward syndrome is basically trisomy 18. And what exactly about it is the strawberry skull? So when you see a child of Edwards, uh, you will always see that the occipital region is very prominent. You can see the protrusion of the occipital region. And the chin is very, very small. The chin is very, very small. So small chin and there's a prominent occipital region. It kind of gives it a strawberry skull appearance. The radiologist can actually see this quite uh, strikingly. So when they're talking about a strawberry skull, Edwards syndrome should come to your mind. So these are, these are all the strawberries that can help you in the diagnosis of a couple of disorders. So apples and oranges and strawberries are done. So grapes comes next. When we're talking about grapes, when we look at, first look at this picture, I can see a grape-like cluster. And these are all microorganisms, dot, dot, dot. So the small circular dots, they are cocci. So which are the cocci which are arranged in grape-like clusters? That is Staphylococcus aureus. In fact, you know, that is why it's named so. If you ever sit and dissect, why did they call it Staphylococcus? So cocus, I think everyone knows, Kokai, the shape, because they are round, dot in shape. That's why kokai. What is the meaning of staphyl? Staphyl actually means bunch of grapes. That is why this organism got its name like that. It's known as a bunch of grapes out here. And I can see that it's a purple color that it's get. It's uh, getting a purple color because it's a gram-positive organism. Gram-positive organisms get a purple color. Coming to the next. Grape-like vesicles. Female, grape-like vesicles present in the uterus. I know I'm talking about high date deform mole, partial mole, complete mole. How do they present? By these clear-looking grape-like vesicles. Why are they so clear? They have um, fluid inside them. So high date deform mole, grape-like vesicles. Whether complete mole or partial mole, the grape-like appearance remains. Lastly, coming to a tumor which is seen commonly in children, so that's why I've put a word embryonal in front of it, and that tumor is rhabdomyosarcoma. So embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma shows you this grape-like appearance. Because of that, you know, it's very famously known as one money. Embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma is also known as sarcoma botryoids. It's also known as sarcoma botryoids because a sarcoma word tells me that it's a cancer it's a malignancy botryoids tells me that it looks like a grape-like cluster as i can see this very clearly over here grape-like clusters and a sarcoma sarcoma botryoids embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma well coming to the next we are left with a mulberry so where in pathology do we study mulberry cells? Mulberry cells have been given another name called the Mott cell and that is seen in plasma cell dyscrasias. I think everyone knows the most famous plasma cell disorder which is quite uh, important for your exams also that is multiple myeloma. And multiple myeloma or any plasma cell disorder means a lot of antibodies. Plasma cell tumor means lots and lots of antibodies will be getting produced. So when I saw these cells... If I can draw them, all of these cells, they definitely have a nucleus. But apart from the nucleus, I can see some vacuoles. And the vacuoles are such that the cell has started looking like a berry. Just like a berry has those that shapes and round structures. So that is why they've called it a mulberry cell or a mott cell. And if someone asks you what are these vacuoles made up of, all these vacuoles, they are nothing but the antibodies. The antibodies which are getting produced and deposited, that is what they are made up of. So that is what you call as a mulberry body, also known as a mott cell. Well, the last fruit that I have, banana. This is actually a question of microbiology and I think everyone knows banana-shaped gametocytes are seen in Plasmodium falciparum. So definitely you can see this banana shaped gametocyte. That's the plasmodium falciparum that you have. So I hope the fruits made sense. 
apple green birefringence for amyloid. Then you had the pure de orange appearance, which was for breast cancer. Then you had a very long list for the strawberry appearances. For the grape, in microbiology, you had Staphylococcus aureus. In pathology, you had hydatidae for mold and also one tumor that is embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma. For banana shape, you had gametocytes of plasmodium falciparum. For mulberry, you had the mort cell, which you see in a case of multiple myeloma. That's a summary of all the fruits that you had. And now let's move on to something more. Let's go on to a few vegetables and something to do with um, probably calling it lunchtime. So yes, this is what all you can probably have. You have some spices, you have some sauces, some vegetables, rice, curd, all these similarities, food similarities, let's go to. So first, when I talk about a curdy white discharge, a curdy or a creamy white discharge and the gynecologist is saying that this is the curdy or the creamy white discharge is seen in the cervix, it is indicative of candidial infection. Means if you're seeing such a thing, you're supposed to do a pap smear, you're supposed to document the presence of candida organism. And obviously start the patient on treatment. When a similar curdy discharge is coming out of a skin lesion, then you're going to call it molluscum contagiosum. So very famous for molluscum contagiosum also, curdy white discharge. Coming to the next, this is not a very common question and I'll always reserve this for the INI CET. You might not have heard it also very commonly that which is the particular tumor which can show you carrot shaped nuclei and that is medulloblastoma. See, whenever I talk about medulloblastoma, the only pathology question that I study that it is very famous for having Homer right pseudorosids. That is what I study about it. It is famous for having Homer right pseudorosids. But so if I can draw the Homer right pseudorosid, these are how the tumor cells are present. These are the tumor cells which are present of medulloblastoma. And there'll be some pinkish pinkish material inside it. So that is how a Homer right pseudorosid possibly looks like. But whenever you try to analyze the nuclei of these cells, the nuclei of these cells, which no one really focuses too much on, but they tend to be carrot shaped nuclei, a little elongated, just like the shape of a carrot. But again, I would still reserve this as an INICET question. Moving on to the next, that's a potato. So one, two, three. Where clinically do you call something as a potato tumor? The carotid body tumor presenting in as a potato-like swelling in the neck. Carotid body tumor is something that you call as the potato tumor. Where in ENT do you describe it as the potato nose? Like you can see over here, potato nose is a disease known as rhinophyma. This you must have seen in people around you also. It's not a very uncommon thing. Rhinophyma, potato nose. But in pathology, which tumor, when you cut that tumor, it shows or it gives the appearance as if you are seeing the cut section of a potato, as if you're seeing the cut section of a potato, like this tumor over here. That is a seminoma. Seminoma tends to show you a potato cut appearance. After the potato, coming to the cauliflower. So whenever I say that there is a person who's come to me with a mass, which is a cauliflower-like lesion. Have a look at the cauliflower. It's got a variegated, a rough kind of a surface. So here also I've got a fungating kind of a rough lesion. So whenever I see a fungating cauliflower mass, first notion that you're supposed to carry is that you are supposed to call it a carcinoma. And going by experience, I'm not saying all the time, but usually they tend to be squamous cell carcinomas. I'm again putting up the word that this is not mandatory. This is a usual that histologically they come out to be as SCCs. But um, fungating and cauliflower light makes one thing certain that somewhere you need to investigate the patient for carcinomas. Okay, coming to the next. So, this you've got rice soaked in water. So, certainly the rice water and I think this is quite an easy one in microbiology. Rice water stools, vibrio cholera, diarrhea which is associated with vibrio cholera. That is how they, so this is the water after the water has been drained out. So, this is the appearance that you have. So, rice water stools are seen with vibrio cholera. Next, talking about this, so when we come to this bottle of brownish color sauce, that is anchovy sauce, uh, this is how, you know, this is a sauce which certain parts of the country it is consumed in. 
uh, but at the same time when i'm talking about it in pathology and in medicine please remember anchovy sauce appearance is seen with amoebic liver abscess amoebic liver abscess means it is caused by entamoeba histolytica it is caused by entamoeba histolytica and that kind of explains that when entamoeba histolytica involves the liver see histolytica word tells you a lot of things histo means tissue and lytica means lysis means wherever is this organism will go it will break the tissue for example if it goes to the intestine if it goes to the intestinal organism uh, organ in the intestine it tends to cause a flask shaped ulcer the intestine wall starts breaking right there's a flask shaped ulcer which looks something like this so the tissue over here starts breaking similarly when it comes to the liver the liver tissue also starts breaking and that is why you get this liquidy saucy kind of an appearance this brownish appearance because the liver tissue is being lysed is being broken so anchovy sauce appearance amoebic liver abscess after the sauce let's come to the spices so you've got some salt and pepper and whenever we say salt and pepper chromatin all the neuroendocrine tumors so this word is really important in your mcqs guys whenever salt and pepper chromatin what do i mean by that so they'll give you a cell in the cell they'll give you a nucleus that nucleus will usually be a dark nucleus overall it will be a dark nucleus overall but in some areas of the nucleus you will see these white white dots so you will say that ma'am some of the nucleus is dark some of the nucleus is white so basically salt and pepper dark and light dark and light that kind of a nucleus that kind of a salt and pepper chromatin is seen with nets neuroendocrine tumors and any of your choice you can pick up for example if you ask me neuroendocrine tumor like carcinoid tumor yes in the lungs if you ask me small cell carcinoma if you ask me pheochromocytomas so all the neuroendocrine tumors are going to show you the same thing of salt and pepper chromatin one more spice is left that is nutmeg in fact guys this was also a question of the recent year in 2021 it was asked when i'm dealing with nutmeg if you cut a nutmeg if you look at the cut surface i think you can very well see dark areas pale areas and that is exactly what you see in a nutmeg liver when you're talking about a nutmeg liver can you see there are some dark areas and then lighter areas dark areas and lighter areas so that is what is present and when do we see this nutmeg liver is seen in cvc cvc means chronic venous congestion chronic venous congestion means a lot of venous blood is pooling in the liver why would the venous blood come and pool in the liver ideally from organs like liver and spleen all the venous blood i'll draw it as the dirty uh, the dirty blue blood all of this goes into which side of the heart all of this goes into the right side of the heart however if i have a patient who's had right sided heart failure the right side of the heart has failed means all the blood is going to pool back that is the reason the venous congestion is happening in the liver so that is why i'm calling it chronic venous congestion it can be seen in right sided heart failure and that is the reason that i'm seeing dark and light areas just like a nutmeg so nutmeg liver seen in cvc of the liver okay having said that so a lot of food related things happening and another food related thing coming up in front of you so snack time we've got some popcorns and we've got some uh, you know some kebabs in front so when do you see the popcorn cell it's a very famous question in hematology popcorn cells are a type of reed sternberg cells you know i'm very used to seeing reed sternberg cell as something like this i'm very used to seeing reed sternberg cell as an owl eye appearance but that is only the classical variety of reed sternberg cell that all of us know of here i'm talking about a variety of reed sternberg cell which is looking something like this it's looking like a popcorn it's convoluted the nucleus is convoluted like a popcorn so that is why you call it a popcorn rs cell now which type of uh, lymphoma do you see it in you see it in the same hodgkins lymphoma but there's a variety the non classical type so you call it nodular lymphocyte predominant hodgkins lymphoma nodular lymphocyte predominant hodgkins lymphoma nlp hl tends to show you these popcorn type of cells 
very very important the second thing that i wanted to ask you was the shish kebab effect shish kebab effect is something that uh, is seen with candida so i think now the entire spectrum is done when i showed you the clinical profile on the clinical profile of candida i very well showed you that it has that curdy white discharge and that is something which is very important now if i come to the microscopy part of it then you know that i'm dealing with the shish kebab effect so imagine you've done a pap smear from the same patient you remember this patient guys this patient who had a curdy white discharge whom you diagnosed as candida the same patient has got a pap smear done and this is what you will see you will see the shish kebab effect means uh, what do i have in a if i go by the food item and i'm very sorry i'm always sorry for ruining this for a lot of you but it it is how it is so we always have a skew in a, whenever we are talking about um, you know a shish kebab we always have a skew in the center and these are the pieces of kebab that are placed over it so what is this skew made up of this stick or the skew made up of over here these are the pseudo hyphae that candida has everyone knows that candida definitely has pseudo hyphae so these are the pseudo hyphae which makes up that stick and then what are the pieces of kebab that they are talking about they say all the epithelial cells somehow get attached and stuck onto them so imagine all the the skew the pseudo hyphae going like this and see this bunch of epithelial cells which have gotten attached onto it that is what you see in candida that's the shish kebab effect okay moving on we have a last um, you know four five images left so probably uh, i would you know it's uh, by chance it's going like breakfast lunch dinner so this more looks like dinner uh, dinner being served and what are the things so starting with beverages something that can look like a goblet a wine glass goblet number 1 and something that can look like cola cup so when i'm talking about a goblet obviously we have a normal cell in the body which is referred to as a goblet cell which is referred to as a goblet cell and it's seen in the intestine so very well i can see look at these these are the goblet cells which are seen in the intestine and what are they famous for containing they contain mucin very commonly they contain acidic mucin and if you want to confirm ever in pathology if you want to confirm the nature of acidic mucin there's a stain that goes by the same alphabet and that is alcyon blue if you ever want to confirm you will be putting alcyon blue remember it is alcyon blue positive that is acidic mucin which is present inside the goblet cells let's move on to the cola color i think everyone knows cola color urine is indicative of basically blood coming out in the urine in simple medical terminology i'll be calling it hematuria and that is something which is indicative of nephritic syndrome so for example if you have a 10 or a 12 year old child who's coming to you with cola color urine you will definitely suspect some kind of a nephritic syndrome in that child and in a child what's the most common nephritic syndrome i'll think of post streptococcal glomerulonephritis so the most common history of psgn comes like that starting as a 10 or 12 year old child because post streptococcal glomerulonephritis is a pediatric disorder and the child because it's nephritic and child will have hematuria so they say the mother is saying that there's a cola color urine that the child is passing very very nice and famous history okay so beverage is done let's go to food so in the food what is being served over here is a uh, spaghetti and meatball that's the next thing that you have and let me tell you this uh, spaghetti and meatball appearance is very very famous when it comes to microbiology so remember spaghetti and meatball so the spaghetti refers to the hyphae the hyphae is because spaghetti pasta refers to the hyphae and the meatball refers to the dot 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 the yeast form so there are hyphae form there are yeast form and that is what you see in malassezia furfur malassezia furfur tends to show you the spaghetti and meatball appearance there's one more place in microbiology where you get to see not the spaghetti and meatball but you see bowl of spaghetti which virus looks like this filamentous like a bowl of spaghetti so the way you pronounce it see ebola ebola virus bowl it sounds like a bowl so it's looking like a lot of filamentous organisms like a bowl of spaghetti so spaghetti and meatball malassezia furfur bowl of spaghetti ebola virus okay where do we see the most famous second year pass fail question i think everyone's going to agree with me the second year pass fail question is cheesy appearance where do we see this cheesy appearance 
caseous necrosis is cheesy. So this is a lymph node and this lymph node has been affected with tuberculosis. So when I cut open the lymph node, I could see a lot of cheesy material inside it. In our country, when in lymph node or in lungs, when you see this kind of a cheesy appearance, you know it is caseous necrosis and patient is probably suffering from tuberculosis. Okay, after this, we come to the fish. Which tumor shows you fish flesh appearance? Again, something which students tend to miss out on, don't study too well, and these kind of catch points in the exam can cost you a lot. So, this is actually, guys, you know, a lymph node. And a lymph node has been cut into, has been cut with a scalpel. So, when you saw the cut surface, this is the cut surface of the lymph node. When you saw the cut surface, it's looking like fish flesh. It's looking like fish flesh. So remember lymphoma cases, when lymphoma is involving the lymph node, on cutting the lymph node, you get this kind of a fish flesh appearance. If someone has mentioned this in your clinical history, that on the cut section of a lymph node, a fish flesh appearance was noted, you think of lymphoma. So simple, if they cut a lymph node and they get cheesy appearance, it's caseous necrosis, TB. If they cut a lymph node and they get fish flesh appearance, it's prob probably a lymphoma, but then you need confirmation, which you'll do obviously with the help of the slides. Talking about fish, there's a very famous variety of fish known as salmon fish. So that also has something to do in pathology because salmon fish, you know, what is the color of a salmon fish? The color of a salmon fish is pinkish in color. So um, that is exactly what uh, pinkish reddish in color is the color that this fish has. So even in pathology, I use this term quite often. Whenever I'm describing Barrett's esophagus, this is actually an endoscopy view. So the gastroenterologist will be describing this. So over here, the gastroenterologist will say that, uh, you know, I have these salmon pink areas. I have these pinkish areas, I can say first. I have these pinkish areas and then I have these reddish areas. So the pinkish or the pale areas, these are normal esophagus. This is normal esophagus, but these red velvety areas these red velvety areas that's how it's described red velvety areas are indicative of barrett's esophagus so the normal mucosa of the esophagus is pale pink in color but this bright velvety reddish color salmon reddish color that is barrett's esophagus next again coming to amyloid so i've studied amyloid and i studied congo red earlier also i had studied in the beginning when i was doing the fruits i had studied that when i use congo red for a myeloid, I get an apple green birefringence, but what microscopy had I used that time? It was the same Congo red, it was the same myeloid, but I had used polarizing microscopy. When I used polarizing microscopy, I got an apple green birefringence. Now also guys, I'm using the same Congo red and the same myeloid. It's the same Congo red, it's the same myeloid, but now I'm using light microscopy. So what is the color of all these myeloid deposits that have come? They have come out to be salmon pink in color. That's why we are comparing it with the salmon fish. So remember, Congo red, for a myeloid, you can see it under two microscopes. Under a light microscope, you see the salmon pink appearance. Under polarizing microscopy, you will be seeing the apple green birefringence. Coming to the next, and that is to do with, since we were talking about a lot about fish, the fish is not over. So fish flesh, we've done lymphoma, lymph node. Salmon fish is a different variety. Then the bone of the fish. So if this is the fish and you look at the vertebra, the bones radiating out from the spine, this is known as, this is a special fish that is known as herring fish. Herring fish is a special type of a fish and I'm focusing on the bone of this fish. So which is the tumor which shows you the herring bone pattern? That is what they ask you in the exam. Herring bone pattern is seen with a tumor in pathology called fibrosarcoma. What do I mean by that? See, sarcoma tells me it's definitely a malignant tumor, right? So you can see one line going through and you can see the tumor cells are coming out of it. Then another line going through, tumor cells coming out of it. Another line going through, tumor cells coming out of it. So that is how the spine and the, uh, the bone of this herring fish is actually arranged. So herring bone pattern, fibrosarcoma, very famous question. One last fish and last image of this day is left and that is to do with fish mouth. 
where all can you see the fish mouth so one place in radiology and one place in pathology medicine so first this is the mitral valve and you can see that the valve seems to be stenosed because the opening is narrow just like a fish mouth so remember fish mouth mitral valve is seen in mitral stenosis and that i see when a patient has rheumatic heart disease especially when a patient has chronic rheumatic heart disease that is when the patient tends to suffer from mitral stenosis chronic rhd mein mitral stenosis hota hai and this is how it looks like that is the fish mouth versus where do i see this kind of a fish mouth vertebra fish mouth vertebra can be seen in a hemato hematological disorder that is sickle cell anemia also can be seen in osteoporosis it's not a specific finding so there's actually an even longer list so fish mouth vertebra very common two question sickle cell anemia and osteoporosis fish mouth mitral valve is seen in chronic rheumatic heart disease and uh, that is how the stenosis tends to occur with which guys like i said it's impossible to cover all the food related things in one go in path but certainly a subject which is very fond of food and these were just some quick reviews because these are the most important ones which are catch points in the question and which will which will definitely help you in a attempting the questions so i hope you had a great time in this um, fun plus learning session and uh, probably we have a couple of them left sometime in between when we are sick of the usual monotony of mcqs and images such questions can be a breath of fresh air and we'll have another part of this also in the coming month well having 40 days left for the neat pg i hope all of you are prepping well and if not then get over all the negativity give it your best shot 40 days and then think that you do not have to read this ever again because you're going to enter the dream branch that you've been thinking of so think of the positive side of it get going 40 days do not think about anything but your studies and in a positive manner because the more positive energy you put in while studying the more uh, results is what you'll get in return study well guys keep up the spirit all the very best thank you for joining in good night